This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us today is Jason Brewer, the Executive Director of Shuka Minerals, which is the new name for Edenville Energy, and the new ticker is SKA. So hello, Jason. Thank you very much for joining us today. I know the AGM was only a day or two ago. How are things going? Mark, they're going very well, going very well. Um, as you said, the AGM was yesterday, which um, essentially draws the line uh, for Edenville and paves the way forward now for the new company, which is to be named Shuka Minerals. And there's still some administrative matters to deal with that, with the stock exchange um, and with our new website and so on. But, but yes, all set to, uh, to move forward at pace with the new company, Shuka Minerals. Okay. Well, I wonder if you can give some perhaps background to Edenville and what that was all about, how the uh, position that you're now in came about, how the change of direction, the change of focus, and indeed the, the name change and this new focus and what that's all about. Okay, Mark, quite a few questions there early in the morning, but yeah, we'll get through that. Um, Eden Villa Energy, it's a name listed company, and it's been developing and operating a coal mine in Tanzania for, for the past several years. It's an asset which has a, an established jaw compliant resource and where they've managed to get that operational, albeit at relatively modest levels, um, and exporting product there out of Tanzania. Um, invested quite a considerable amount of capital over the years, but as its investors and shareholders will realize, it's, um, it hasn't really performed. So you've seen a, a declining share price for the past number of years. Um, and I guess, look, um, a number of months ago, the existing directors gave me, contacted me, and asked if there was an opportunity for me to get involved and assist them and, and get value back into that company. Um, primarily because of my, my base there in, in East Africa, just across the border from, from their coal mining operation. And they'd seen what I'd, I'd achieved in, in a number of other companies there listed in London and, and wanted me to get involved. And look, my time is precious, don't get me wrong, but I, I see, Edenville stroke Shuka Minerals as, as a great company and a great platform to build something quite significant in, in Africa. Okay. And on the name change, Jason, is this part of the sort of turning over a fresh leaf or is there anything more behind the name? Look, there's always got to be more behind. It's not just a name. It, it's certainly not a name. Um, for those out of the UK that have visited Kenya, Tanzania, visited the Masai Mara or the Serengeti, uh, shuka is that cloth, typically that red cloth, which the, the Maasai wear. And it's, it's a sign of power. It's a sign of quite, a, it's, it's the dress of a very unique tribe here in East Africa. One that has maintained its culture, maintained its identity. And it's something I like to identify with because you always want to be associated with something powerful and something unique. And I think here now with Edenville, with Shuka Minerals, we can build something quite unique in in east africa in central africa throughout africa and a mining company which is able to move forward and build on its experience in africa and and grow a business quite substantially okay we're talking about building uh, on your vision in in africa there you talked about the thermal coal project the legacy asset at edenville are you looking to continue going with that or you look to divest with it and then what's the other focus going to be how are you going to what are the projects are you perhaps looking at in in africa Look, when at the beginning of June, when the company announced my involvement through my own company here, my, my partner's company here in East Africa, which is Gathoni Mushai, um, and then there was also a, a co-investment, an investment there by Quinton Vanderberg's Q Global Commodities out of South Africa. When that investment, which was about 1. 1. 1.5 million pounds, was announced, it was made clear that we would continue to, to look at how we maximize value out of that thermal coal asset, which is a which is the Rukwa coal mine. Um, but also we made it clear that the funds that we were advancing were also to be used for due diligence on a number of other assets that we that was ongoing and that we felt were strategically complementary, complementary in terms of the company's focus here in, in Africa, in East Africa, and, and regionally here, I guess, East and uh, Central Africa. So 
We made it very clear in that announcement that it just wasn't about the, the thermal coal asset. There was work that was already underway, reviewing and completing due diligence on other assets. And that's still ongoing, Mark. Um, we hope to progress that obviously in, in, the, in the coming days, the current week, coming weeks, um, and hopefully have something which will add quite some value to, to the company and its investors. Okay, so there are other projects that you're looking at, and we have to wait and see, do we, until uh, some of those uh, due diligence matters are taken care of, and then you can announce something to the market? Yeah, look, everything has to, to run a course. Everything requires a uh, specific process to go through. And, um, yeah, I am one of a number of directors on that board, uh, a board that will be restructured. And even at yesterday's AGM, there was a restructure of that board with the mm -hmm. directors stepping down. Um, tendering his resignation. So as we move forward, we'll work with the, with the board, with the new board members that will come on, and we will review those projects. And we're not gonna, we're gonna move very quickly. As a junior company, you have to be agile. And as many people know of my involvement in other companies, um, you know, we move at a very fast pace, um, but we do the work, we do the due diligence, we dot the I's, cross the T's, and make sure that what we're getting is going to be something that adds considerable value to the company. Okay. Can you give me any idea or listeners any idea of the, the sort of projects you're looking at? You know, what commodities, for example, is there a specific focus to, to Shuka Minerals, like an ethos perhaps? Oh, look, I think the great benefit of, of, of the current company of Edenville is that it has a producing mine. So mm -hmm. there's actually, as, as I said, it's, it's a producing mine, albeit at modest levels. And it's, it's focused there in that coal sector. Uh, coal is an increasingly difficult commodity to finance. You know, you, you, you're finding a number of banks, particularly out of, out of Europe, North America, even here in Africa, who are shying away from funding hydrocarbons based businesses because of the, the focus now on renewables, on that transition to green powers. So I think, you know, if we are going to maintain investor interest, we need to be looking at other commodities, other, other metals businesses here in Africa. There's no question about that. Um, as a miner, Edenville has quite, Shuka has quite an advantage here in Africa because there's not too many, you know, listed companies, junior listed companies that have gone through that transition and are a producer. So we will leverage off of that. So the projects that clearly we'll be looking at are ones which we feel are advanced enough to tie in with our producer status and allow us to be producing a cash flow and one which will allow us to, like I say, get value into this company as quickly as possible. I mean, there's been over 90% decline in the company share price over the past two to three years, and that's unacceptable in any business. Um, it's been pleasing to see that turnaround since, since our involvement, since my involvement here, and we hope that's going to continue. Okay. Now, of course, you are executive director of, of Shuka, and, but you are CEO of Marula Mining do you have any concerns with balancing your, your efforts or your time between two companies? No, look, we've, I've discussed it with both boards and um, those boards have, have also talked to their, their respective advisors as well. Um, the last thing I want in my life is conflicts of interest. Um, you know, we all want to be able to focus on, on specific things. So Marula is very much that battery metals focused business, as, as you know. And I believe as we progress the, the new project opportunities with, with Shuka, with Edenville, we'll, uh, we'll be looking at projects which don't create those, those sort of issues. Um, but as and when those projects are advanced and board decisions are required, then the broad board will make those decisions. Um, as we look at those projects, it's important. Um, obviously, there's myself as an executive director and we, through my business here in East Africa, we've invested quite a considerable amount of funds into, into the company. There is another major shareholder, as, as I mentioned earlier, Q Global Commodities, um, which is Quinton van der Berg's uh, mining company in, in South Africa. They've invested as well a, a considerable amount. So we both bring complementary skills and we both identify different types of opportunities. What's well, the final question, Jason? You mentioned earlier about the, the money raised, circa 1.5 million, and that's done, I think, partly by you and your company, your private company, but also uh, QGC, and that's Quinton, who you, who you mentioned earlier, the uh, the African sort of billionaire mining investor, who I know has got a little bit of a involvement in one or two of the projects with Marula as well. So the company is fairly well capitalised here, and I think it's over 50% 
of the shares are held in, in sticky hands between the two parties. So, I mean, what's the relationship with QGC and the funding situation going forward? Sure. Um, as, you, as you mentioned there, Mark, um, personally, through myself and my partner here in East Africa, we've invested almost £600,000 into this company, um, the second tranche of which was approved at the AGM. And independently of that, Quinton's business, which is Q Global Commodities, as, as you mentioned, QGC, they've invested almost £900,000 into this. And again, the second tranche was appro- approved yesterday. Um, it does provide that company, it does provide us with a good, strong cash base in which to grow this business. Um, but I think more importantly, you've got two shareholders, as I mentioned just now, acting independently, that brings so much to the, to the table. QGC operate 12, 12 mines in South Africa. Uh, in addition to that, I think they've got something like 43 mining investment um, opportunities across both coal and, and other metals. A very big, well-established team there covering mining, logistics, transportation, sales, marketing. So they themselves bring an awful lot to, to Edenville, Shuka Minerals. Um, I like to think that through Guthoni Mishaya, the company we have here in, in, in Kenya, we also bring something which is a little bit more probably dynamic, um, probably a little bit more entrepreneurial and very good at identifying project opportunities. We're on the ground. We're able to go and visit projects throughout East, Southern, Central Africa. And I think having that presence here is, is a huge asset. And so, look, we are two separate shareholding groups. We operate independently. We have our own investment criteria. But together, as you say, we, we hold about 50% of this company now. So that's a significant holding. And I think shareholders should recognize that, you know, we're not going to be selling. We're certainly not going to be selling. Um, Quinton has invested in one of my other companies. And um, he's done very well out of that with Marula. Um, he's invested a considerable sum, which is up four or five times over the past six months. And I'm sure he would be looking to me to kind of repeat that sort of success here at, uh, at Shuka Minerals. I hope I can. There's obviously no guarantee, but, you know, I'm certainly going to be putting just as much effort into, into this company as the other. So, no, two good shareholding groups uh, that bring yeah, a lot to this company. And I think we'll really set it apart for many others that are listed there on, on the A market in London. Okay, well, it certainly does sound like you're well set up between the two parties to find those compelling projects and hopefully build out a quite exciting mining company again in in Africa. But thank you very much. I look forward to seeing some of the fruits of the work in in due course. But thank you very much for your time today. Jason Brewer, the Executive Director of Shuka Minerals. Mahak, many thanks again. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.